Hey, it's Tony with The Code Guys, and today I'm going to do a video that I've been meaning to do for a while, and that is going to be an advice video on how to get started in game design uh, for beginners. And uh, I want to start by prefacing this with um, an explanation of what I have been doing over the last... 20 years as far as game design goes. Um, I have been, since probably age 12 or so, working on indie games to some degree. I started out writing basic programs and have done just about everything that you can do in making a game. I have scripted, I've done texture editing, I have made models, I have scripted models, we've uh, <clears throat> done just about everything that a game designer would be responsible for. And uh, I use the, the word game designer kind of loosely, but the thing that I want to uh, emphasize is that if you're just starting out, um, it might seem overwhelming that you have to learn everything. Um, all at once. Um, the, the trick really is to understand that in the game development world you're really going to eventually have to pick a path and go down that path um, whether it be art, whether it be project management, whether it be design. Um, there's not really many people that are very talented um, or um, have the ability to become talented or skilled in every single thing that it takes to make a game. I mean, there are engine coders, there are scripters, there are so many different things um, involved in making a professional game that a lot of, uh, I think, people start off and think, oh, I have to learn everything. Um, and that's just really not the case. I, uh, I have, um, over the years, fallen victim to wanting to do it all myself, and um, that's kind of held me back over the years. It's important to pick something, uh, to try them all out and determine what you're good at or what you like doing, and then um, kind of going down that path. It's perfectly okay to try out each part of game um, development and see which best suits your um, interest level. So the um, first thing that I would recommend is that uh, you start out with a, uh, and the reason why I'm sitting in Second Life is um, the whole sandbox mentality and where I am in, the wor in this world is in a sandbox. It's a place where you can build and uh, move uh, 3D objects around, uh, create um, objects, and script them, and eventually you can turn them into games. Second Life is probably the most flexible as far as um, the ability to log in and within minutes you're creating objects. I mean, uh, you literally can find a sandbox after downloading the software and uh, there are simulations that allow you to build. Now, what you would learn inside Second Life um, would be 3D, um, uh, kind of 3D modeling. It's not really what you would be doing in the game development world, but it would get you working with primitives and um, also you would be working with textures. You can apply textures to your objects and that's really important because uh, you can learn how um, you can learn min many different things about textures. Um, you, you can um, use kind of use materials to an extent, but um, not, it's just really something to get you started um, with uh, what I would consider game development. The performance is typically pretty bad um, as far as building. 
or um, actually anything on many of the PCs that I deal deal with. Second Life is really poorly performing, but you are able to build objects. You are able to, in this case, create scripts. It's not scripts um, that you would use in a professional world, but uh, it it would give you some exposure to uh, writing some physics because there are physics um, functions inside Second Life. Now, um, I say Second Life because you immediately can get in the world, start building, start scripting um, with a free account, and um, you can kind of identify which way you want to go. I mean, uh, then um, I suggest picking um, any game that allows you to build levels, um, whether that be um, Halo, Forge World, uh, whether it be Gary's Mod from the Valve uh, games, which is a great way to use a sandbox and learn how to move things around in 3D space. Um, Unity, uh, I'll, I'll uh, bring some of these up. If you go to Gary's Mod, you you do need a um, you do need one of the Valve games um, purchased and on your computer. And then you purchase uh, Gary's Mod from Steam for $9. Um, and it gives you the ability to uh, use, use really high-res or uh, great models and uh, objects and do modifications to the Valve games. Unity 3D is probably a graduation from um, anything that you would be doing in a level editor because you can actually, it's a free program and you can develop just about any, I mean, it is a game engine that you can develop and from the ground up indie games. Um, then of course there's the uh, Unreal Development Kit and um, that is probably your next step. But uh, let's go, th these are just things that you can install and uh, get your feet wet in game development. And the, the most important thing I think is that you um, head down a path of creating a product and learning um, a, the, about the basics as you're building. And you may, uh, I've worked on two very big um, projects in, in my career that involved working on big teams of of texture artists, um, object, uh, 3D modelers, and I was pretty much the project manager, and I, w I could do pretty much everything on the team, but um, I learned that there was a definite skill set to each little piece of uh, game development, wh whether it be one guy that is amazing at doing um, scenery, but is terrible at doing characters, and um, you know, whether they can develop trees, whether they can develop terrain, uh, everybody has a niche that's very important. So uh, this is basically an overview of uh, our game design um, series that we're about to release over the summer. And this summer we're going to go through Unity 3D. We're, go we're going to uh, try to get the CryEngine uh, the educational version. Um, we're going to be going through Second Life and teaching you some of the gaming um, possibilities inside Second Life. As clunky as that is, it is very clunky, but um, it's definitely something that you can start off and get your feet wet with. Um, we will be using the Torque engine, which is an older engine, but is still being used heavily. Um, these are all things that in a very short period of time, you can get these on your machine and uh, get up and running, writing some um, games or, or, or creating uh, game objects or writing code. So um, I wanted to make this video to give you some exposure to some things that if you didn't know they exist, they are out there. Uh, you can jump in, grab them, and um, go. So um, please leave a comment on what would you like to see us do? Um, or if you have 
some game development projects that you're working on, um, make a video of them, and uh, we'll highlight these on future videos um, in, a, in our series. All summer long, we're going to be doing game design from the ground up. We're going to show you how to do texturing. We're going to show you how to do modeling. We're going to try to get uh, some good scripting, and uh, the only thing that we're probably not going to do is build an engine from the ground up because there's already so many engines out there that you can pick up and run with. So, Also, um, we would like to do some intro to really, really beginner programs. I think there's a RPG Maker and Game Maker and things like that. So um, if any of you guys have experience with those um, softwares and can make a recommendation of what you would like for us to cover or if you could even uh, lend a hand at uh, giving us some videos to link to we'd really appreciate it we want it to be a comprehensive indie game design um, summer in which uh, we make a game or um, pretty much start making a full game in various um, game engines so um, thanks for watching and have a great day.